Hello, Mr. Sharp here. We're going to discuss today week three, consumer credit. Uh, probably one of the main reasons or uh, purposes of actually teaching personal finance in high school is a lot of adults don't quite understand how consumer credit works. So today we're going to go through and, and give you a little bit of insight as to uh, how it works. Uh, consumer credit is more or less an arrangement to receive cash, goods, and services now uh, and pay for them in the future. Um, last week we talked a little bit about cash flow statements. Uh, one of the biggest disadvantages of using credit is it's going to uh, restrict a little bit of our, or potentially a lot of our, future cash flow. And so it's very important that we use this wisely. Um, as Dave Ramsey's uh, very adamant about not using it, uh, as you probably have, have heard in, in his videos this week. Uh, consumer credit is how you, you use your credit to purchase items, and then a creditor is someone who's going to uh, lend you money. For instance, this could be MasterCard, could be Wells Fargo and the home loans, um, and a variety of different types of lenders that are out there and available. Um, th this kind of gears right into American society as it sits right now. Uh, a lot of people want things now. Uh, and that's not just your generation, but also several in front of you. And that's one of the reasons that this class is required uh, currently in the state of Missouri. Uh, we, want, we want those things now and, and are not necessarily willing to wait for them. Uh, credit uses and misuses. Uh, understand that it's going to uh, increase the amount of money that you have available to you access right now. Uh, but it's going to decrease your future value and or uh, your opportunity cost later on. Things that you need to consider before using. One, do you have a, a cash down payment that will allow us to decrease the amount of credit that we can actually use? Um, also, could we dip into our savings? Uh, hopefully at this point we're beginning to uh, use our savings for a variety of different things, but also hopefully we have a savings account we're beginning to save just in general uh, as we discussed in both week, weeks one and two. Can you afford it? Uh, this is a, is a, a big uh, big topic here because you're going to give be given access to money that, that you cannot truly afford. Uh, I'll give you a perfect example when, when my, my wife and I uh, built our first house. Um, it wasn't anything extravagant or anything else. It was about a uh, $250,000 house, which to me is a, uh, I mean, that's a pretty big deal. And when we were going through the home loan process, uh, they were going to be willing to give us access to $470,000 to build a new house. Um, I can tell you on two teacher incomes at that point in our life, uh, $470,000 house, uh, we would not have been able probably to afford to put anything in it. We would have been what's called house poor. So we could have had you over for a barbecue or anything else, but we wouldn't have had anywhere for you to sit. And so that's what you've got to look at. Uh, and that resulted in the, the big bank crisis and the mortgage crisis of 2009 as lenders were, were lending way too much money. Uh, can you use that credit in a more productive way? Um, you have access to money? Is there something that you can do in order to uh, benefit yourself and or your family? Uh, this one here is going to hit home a little bit. Could you just save up? and wait to purchase that item until you actually had cash. Uh, that is the, necessarily the Dave Ramsey way. He wants you to have cash all the time in order to pay for those items. Uh, I you know, uh, agree with a lot that he says, uh, but especially in, in the home loan area, uh, I do believe that, uh, there, is, there are uses for credit, but it needs to be monitored. Uh, there needs to be a significant amount of discipline that goes into it. Uh, also, your personality. Uh, should go along a lot with credit as well. So our money and personality that we talked about in week one, for instance, if you're a spender um, or you're categorized as a spender, please be careful uh, in the credit world because understand you are, are kind of predisposed to spending money. And so if you're given access to money that you don't have, the likelihood is that you're going to spend more money than you actually have. Uh, and that kind of goes away from a lot of the things that we talk about in finance. Also, what are the overall costs? Um, what you need to understand is sometimes in using credit, uh, there are finance fees that go along with that. Now, those are considered negative interest or negative interest rates where we're actually paying more for goods. And so if I have my uh, handy dandy iPhone here and I buy this on credit, 
please understand the iPhone itself may cost $300 or $600, whatever it may be. And if I buy that on credit, it could very well end up costing seven, eight, nine, uh, up to a thousand dollars just based on me not paying it off right away and continuing over time to allow that that negative interest to occur. So you've really got to be careful there. Uh, advantages and disadvantages. Uh, one, you do get to enjoy the the services or goods right now. Uh, it gives you a record of your expenses. Uh, I agree with that, but also so does your debit card. Uh, you do not have to carry cash, which I will say in some instances is nice, especially maybe if you're on vacation or something else along those lines. You don't want to carry cash around on you. Uh, but then also lenders see that you're responsible. It allows you to, to gain a positive credit reputation over time. Now understand that it is extremely, and you'll see this in the disadvantages, it is extremely easy to lose that reputation. It's a lot like your grades. Uh, you know, you work really hard to get that A. Uh, maybe you're out for three or four days and you see that grade really plummet. And it seems like it takes forever for that thing to come back up. And that's very similar to how your credit reputation works as well. Uh, a lot of times in terms of disadvantages of credit cards and or the use of credit is we buy more than we can afford. Uh, we lose that credit reputation uh, and then also we can lose some of our income in our property so what you're going to find out is if you don't pay for things people are going to take them so if you, if you buy a house and you can't afford the payment over time that house will be taken back and it'll be foreclosed on um, also same thing with cars so those are our examples of repos here are types. You'll see these on your test, so please make sure that you maybe jot a note down on these. Uh, one is closed in, the other is open. Closed in credit is a one-time loan. For instance, your mortgage loan, a student loan, or a vehicle loan where, where it's going to be at one place. Versus an open end credit, the example of this would be like a MasterCard, a Visa, uh, American Express, or something along those lines where you're given a credit line and it gives you access to go spend money anywhere that you would like. And so, uh, variety of goods and services, anything that you would like to purchase uh, at any location, and that's what's called open-ended credit. Here are a couple types of sources of con consumer credit in terms of where they come from. Uh, the first would be inexpensive loans. These a lot of times come from family, friends. Uh, I will say be careful um, in dealing with these because uh, people are going to want their money back unless it's considered a gift and, and if you don't give it back right away uh, it is going to potentially put a strain on your relationship uh, no matter how close you think uh, you are. Medium price, these are going to come from banks and credit unions. Uh, these usually have what are considered uh, market rates uh, in terms of what the, the Fed has set interest rates. It's going to be very similar to those. Uh, expensive loans, these are things that we should never do. Uh, I don't, you know, don't condone these and I highly recommend that you never do these. Uh, a lot of these are considered predatory lenders so please be careful. Uh, stay away from these things. Keep a good positive credit reputation so that you never have to do business. Uh, an example of payday loans, uh, finance companies, uh, title loans, uh, pawn industries, things like that. Uh, they're the easiest to obtain but also they're most expensive. So we're dealing with interest rates in the 30s, 40s, 50s, uh, sometimes even up to 100%. Uh, there are some current regulations and legislation going on in order to help help monitor through these a little bit. Um, then also we have home equity loans, which will be uh, taking money out of our home uh, that we have positive equity and allowing us to, for instance, pay for maybe a kid's education, uh, medical bills, home improvements, different things like that. Uh, understand there are certain restrictions. For instance, if you miss a payment, uh, you are eligible uh, to have your home taken. So we, we, we want to kind of stay away from these things if we can, uh, but they are an option. Uh, also, we have credit cards. Understand with these, there's a grace period. So if we swipe it, it is not attached uh, to our bank account. It is, um, for instance, a third-party lender. Um, if we pay it within the 30-day grace period, there are no finance charges applied. However, uh, there's what's called the minimum payment trap. If, say for instance, you pay the minimum payment and not the entire amount, a finance charge, a percentage rate. Uh, for you, say at the age of 18, you decide to take out a credit card and go through and, and not pay, off, pay it off in 30 days, most likely your interest rate is going to be anywhere between 18% and 28% just based on your credit history and uh, their lack thereof. Uh, debit cards, these are uh, a card that is attached directly to your checking account. Please understand you can run these as both a debit card, 
which would result in you actually entering or typing in a PIN number and then you can also run it as a credit please understand that doesn't mean that it's a credit card it just is a how the transaction is actually ran um, it'll still automatically be deducted from your checking account so please make sure that when you do this you have the money necessary in your account to cover it uh, so that way we don't become overdrawn or overdrafted cost and methods of obtaining uh, there's what's called the debt payment to income ratio um, it's a nice equation to know you will see one of these on your test and that's what we do is we take the monthly debt payment how much debt you have uh, and we divide that by your monthly income and that's what that does is it it's going to give us a percent and if that is over 20 percent uh, we are currently carrying too much debt and so we want to see that below 20 percent um, as you see on the last bullet if we had a net income of thousand dollars your monthly debt payment should not exceed 200 if so you're over the 20 percent uh, and are beginning to increase your your chances of, of insolvency which we talked about in week two we have the cost of credit um, with this it's the finance charge also understanding a lot of credit cards have uh, fees associated with them just in general and so we really need to be smart with these things a lot of people will will use credit cards in order to receive rewards or travel or uh, airline miles things like that um, which which is great but understand that too a credit card offers those things with the hopes and the expectations of at some point um, over time you're going to be uh, financially reliant on those cards and so it's very important that you know and understand that the annual percentage rate or what's called the APR is the percentage more or less that they're going to charge you interest um, as a first-time lender most likely you'll be anywhere between 18 and 28 percent for instance if you were to apply for a credit card on your 18th birthday most likely they'll be giving you access to anywhere between uh, three and six hundred dollars as a first-time lender uh, tackling the trade-offs um, it's important that you know and understand and this would be for instance uh, car loans home loans uh, interest in general uh, the longer that you finance it so say for instance we we're doing a car loan at 72 months it is going to reduce the amount that we're going to pay monthly however in terms of interest cost over time it is going to drastically increase it and that's just due to uh, there, there's more risk over time and usually it is also associated with a higher interest rate and so we need to be aware of that uh, lender risk versus interest rate understand too that financing that requires little down payment uh, loan with low fixed payments with large final payment and uh, lenders want to reduce their overall risk more or less due to the Truth in Lending Act anytime that you take out any sort of loan or anything else you should be given the terms of uh, any loan agreement and please 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 make sure that you go through and read all of the details in these agreements um, for instance interest rate uh, what the overall cost is what the interest rate cost is um, in order to truly understand uh, how much you're on the hook for um, and obviously if we can pay cash let's just pay cash and stay away from it uh, but I understand too in dealing with homes and sometimes even vehicles uh, credit is sometimes uh, unnecessary evil uh, loan options we have what's called a variable interest rate uh, which means it goes up and down up and down up and down up and down based from month to month in fed rates um, a secured loan this means that we're going to have to have some form of collateral and so uh, you know I can you know maybe if I want to uh, purchase a new vehicle um, I have to show that I have the funds in order to be able to pay for it over time if 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 need be and give the creditor access to something else and so I could list for instance my home as something of, of collateral and or a vehicle or uh, some type of item uh, that they can take um, if I don't pay okay upfront cash and I highly recommend putting as much down as humanly possible in order to try to reduce how much we're going to pay in interest over time and then also uh, reduce the term the shorter the term the lower the interest rate lower risk to the lender uh, but it's also going to drastically increase our monthly payments uh, the five C's of credit I'm running out of time so I'm trying to go quickly here uh, character capacity capital collateral and credit history uh, those are the five C's you will see those uh, on your test so please make sure that you review them 
um, and then your credit report. Um, dealing with your credit report, there are credit bureaus. Um, I would like you to research those three uh, because you will see those 